meeting is now in progress. All righty then. Uh, welcome everybody. Um, we're calling the meeting to order at 5.01 p.m. Welcome to the guests online as well as those who are in person at our town hall. So our first order is to approve the minutes of October 15th, regular meeting, action likely. Um, uh, Tuesday, October 15th was, wow, a while ago, almost a month ago. Um, so the people that were there were um, everybody but Randy. So is there a motion? I make that motion, please. Okay, Vic moves. Is there a second? Zara seconds. All those in favor of October 15th passing of the minutes, say aye. 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 Okay, Randy abstains. Um, their next agenda uh, on the agenda is approving today's agenda for November 12th special meeting. And I guess it's special because it's off the regular schedule, that is right? Correct. Yep. Okay. Because um, we had ta we had taxes, we had what is it called voting <laughs> last Tuesday, so um, we moved our select board meeting to today. Is there a motion to approve said agenda? So moved. Okay, Randy moves. Vic seconds. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Alrighty, we are now at 5.03, and we are ahead of schedule with our highway update from Eric, reviewing post-flood road construction, um, discussing an access permit for Daniel Mercer and Jessica Blaze, and access permit for Ivy Ventures, and reviewing and revising a policy for culverts that uh, Zara will walk us through. Okay. All right, so uh, as far as our equipment and road issues that we've been working on, uh, the only thing we have going on right now with the International is there's a turbo issue in the actuator uh, on that, and it's being worked on at Buzzies right now. Not sure what that's going to entail at the moment. Um, we finished repairs on McCullough Hill for the winter months. Uh, we were out doing some final grading on the roads for the winter months coming up. Uh, we hauled in some road gravel, and next week we're hoping to have the patching done on Shady Rill. Um, and last Friday, uh, we spent all day cleaning out the two four-foot culverts on Lower Sunnybrook. They were pretty much full of gravel. Um, as, as far as the town is concerned, as far as the other work is concerned, the only thing we have left for this year to be done is the guardrails put up before winter, and that's happening next week. Um, pretty much, Where? other than that, Dirk Tech has moved out until springtime. Old Brook Road. Old Brook Road. And Brook Road, too. There's some spots okay. there, too, that are pretty. Yes, sir. How are you coming? Are you able to work on your salt shed? I'm hoping to work on that this week. Okay. Yep. Is that like flat? The roof, yes. Yeah, I got to fix the roof on that. The wind, wind wreaked havoc on it last, last spring. Um, did you get a chance to meet with Carol Picard about that? I have that not met with her yet. I called her and okay. uh, did not get an answer. I'll call her. Okay. She had some concerns about the cross culvert. Yeah, I drainage. looked at I looked at that and where it comes out, it looks like it's all ledged, so I'm not really sure how okay. to wash it out. Who is this? Can't Carol work. Picard. So I gotta go and actually. She was concerned, concerned about concerned. some cross culvert and potentially um, uh, yeah, a big storm might damage her addition, I think is what it was. Yeah. So yeah, so okay. Um, I'm sorry. There's something else you just said that I was at. What you were oh, I know who about the uh, patching of Shady Rail. Yeah. Um, who did you decide to work with again? Uh, Hutchins is going to. They said they could do it. They're the only ones that said they could do it this year. And for how much? What's your estimate? Twenty-two and change. Twenty-two thousand. Okay. And that everybody is not budgeted, or no? You were going to maybe use the repairs. I was going to take it out of my um, contracted services. Which we have a total of thirty thousand for. Okay. So that takes a big chunk out of our contracted services. Everybody, just FYI. Can you just tell me exactly how much Hutchins is going to? I'd have to go back. I don't have the exact number. Okay. I'll get you this exact number. Okay. But you said approximately 22K? Yeah. They're going to do that next week? Yep. Okay. Sorry, you were going to say something, Randy. Roughly 30 ton. Um, 30 ton? I think that's what it's going to be pretty close to. 
to cover everything. If they don't use it, then they don't use it. But yeah, I think part of it was the shape of wheel stuff. Um, I had another question, but it's not coming to mind now. Okay. They're not doing it by the ton, then, right? It's they are. They so are? they are going to be charging only for what the tonnage they use. I said, but I, I wanted a price up to thirty ton. Because I think it's going to take probably all of that or pretty dang close to it. Yeah. So are they piecemeal patching or are they yes, taking they're just, the whole section out? And no, then, they're going to be patching. They're not. We didn't have the ability to do any ripping out in, in uh, repair. But uh, this is pretty much all the way down through. Just, just there's a lot, yeah. a lot yeah. that's falling apart. I know there's been plenty of conversation about it. Yes, there has. <laughs> Uh, this one. The salt shed. That was my yes. question. Um, sounds like you're building something down there or have built something down there? I have. I've had a temporary roof over the blocks that we put up for oh, two years okay. now. And the temporary roof got destroyed with the wind. So I got to redo it. Okay. It's just a wood structure with a tarp over it. It wasn't anything yeah. superb. That was my other question. Okay. Um, all righty. Are there any other questions for, um, I guess we could do a little update on the FEMA, like just money, <laughs> anything about that? Yeah. Did you want to Zara? touch base on that, Zara? Um, so Eric and I had a meeting this morning with FEMA. Um, I had given Dirk everything that he needed for 4720 as of October 15th. And unfortunately, he has not moved things forward in the way that we had hoped. Um, he had kind of promised us that things would be done before the election, and, and they haven't been. As a matter of fact, they were talking about roads that we had uh, finished months ago, um, road groups. So our new rep is Christina. Um, she understands what we need. Um, I'm hoping that this is finally going to be a great FEMA rep. And she seems like she's, you know, wh where we're at is we're, we're having her do the most expensive roads first. So the 750,000 ones, and then she can move on to the 500,000 ones and like that. For the so, yeah. So on our part, we're, we're wrapped up for 4720 and we're already um, well ahead of 4810. We just, they're not at a place where we can present that to them. Um, however, it'll be all done when they're ready. So ho hopefully, again, hopefully this woman, Christina, will expedite this and take it seriously and get it done. Okay. I wonder, does anybody have any sense of what how other towns are doing with their FEMA reimbursements. I mean, I'm just wondering if there's any sense, if there's any- I think it's the same. Yeah, if it makes any sense for us to, you know, notify our congressional just to say, like, I don't know if this is normal. Like, On it Honestly, Liz, yeah, depending on what we see next Tuesday, we're going to give her a week. She just started, uh, uh, Dirk left last Thursday, so she's only had a few days um, plus a weekend. I'm going to see how much she can get done next week before I drop the hammer and let them know that I'm going to be calling Bernie and Peter and and uh, Becca. Um, it's my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, Zara, she's going through and making sure that everything is there. I think she's, is, 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 that, is that what she said she was going to do? She's going to go through and make sure everything is in order where it needs to be and then send it off, correct? Is that correct? I understood that to be. Okay. Say that again. I just wanted to make sure that's how I understood it, is the same way as you. Yeah. Okay. There's someone here. Okay. I will say that also, um, Liz, uh, you know, Anna from the state, um, who is helping us along and kind of driving the bus at this point in our, in our larger group meetings, um, she also did reach out to Cheryl to ask her how much in debt we were, um, you know, what kind of... Um, interest we had accrued that sort of thing um they do seem very focused on us and what our needs are um hopefully within the next week or so we're gonna see some real action 
Okay. I don't know if anyone noticed, and I think it was Digger or something, they were talking. It was like big news <laughs> that FEMA was going to cover, or the federal government was going to cover 90%. That was all stuff that we already knew. Yeah. That was like old news. Mm -hmm. um, that I don't know why it was suddenly announced as if it was. It was a little confusing because it was like, wait a minute, don't we already know this? Like, so. Um, all righty. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so we have an access permit for Daniel Mercer and Jessica Blaze at a 14th mile from. Or a quarter mile? Quarter mile. Okay, quarter mile from Shady Rill Road on East Bear Swamp. Yeah, it's just up the hill on the left. Okay, so it is a... Do we have it? Oh. Uh, okay. so it's pretty standard, except for with an 18-inch culvert. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> and there's plenty of ditch to accommodate that. Okay. And so you feel like it's good? Yep. And is it, will the culvert be in the, it looks like it'll be in the, our right of way? Yes, it'll be in our ditch line. Okay. Yep. All righty. Um, so does anyone have any questions about this or want to see it? Good. Can I see it? You've got right. it up in front of me. Okay. Um, is there a motion to approve this driveway permit? Randy moves. Is there a second? I'll second it. Uh, Dick seconds it. All those in favor of approving the Mercer Blaze driveway permit, say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Thank you. Um, okay. So I must have to sign this, or who signs this? I think you do. Underneath mine. It's on the back page of that. Okay. Can I borrow your pen? Oh, yeah. so, thanks. It's all right. I, Randy's loaning me his. Well, here's an official Tom Middleson. Ooh. <laughs> Oops. I may have given her an official Tom Middleson. Um, our next one is for Ivy. Oh, that's my good pen. No. The next one is for Ivy Ventures, um, which is, oh, I was picturing it as Ms. Ventures, but it's actually Ivy Ventures. Okay. So incorporated. Yes. Um, all righty. So this is, where is this? Zedon Road. Okay, Zedon Road. And what is it for? Uh, right now it's for a single. A single house. Um, okay. And you're talking about an 18-inch culvert? Yep. yep. And there's a ditch line that will accommodate that Okay. As well. So it's pretty much a very similar story. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Um, anyone have any questions about the IB Ventures? Yes, Zara. Uh, just that when I looked them up online, it said that they operate on the cutting edge of enterprise software, healthcare, IT, and hard tech. So is this going to be a business? No. No, they said. It's starting out as a home, and I think they might be putting more in the future, but right now it's supposed to be just a single family home. Just a single family home. That's owned by Ivy Ventures. The property is owned by that, maybe. the guy that owns the company. Is this the same company out of Waterbury? Yep. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Zara. Okay. All those in favor? Or I'm sorry. Is there a motion to approve this driveway permit? So moved. Okay. Vic um, moves and Peter, Peter seconds. Did you get that, Sarah? Vic and Peter. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, all the ayes have it. Okay. Okay, both of them are signed, Sarah. Oh, it looks like, Eric, you need to sign, too. No, you no, signed I, I think I signed. already did. You did. Yeah, you did. Okay, good. All right. Um, all right, so now... Before you move yep. on, uh, Sarah, just uh, to let you know, it looks like the ones that went out, the name on the file, the electronic file is IB Ventures, but it comes up with the Daniel Mercer and Jessica Blaze. Uh, that email has two of the same permit on them, just under different names. Oh, sorry. So just to let you know in case that's saved in a different no. okay. file okay. somewhere. Wait, are they the same people? It's no. the same permit, the, um, but right, on here it's the file name is IB Ventures, but the permit is the other one. Sorry. Yeah, I didn't even look at it. 
Yeah. Because it was after 2.30. <laughs> So our driveway culvert policy is up next. And this is something that Zara and your team worked on, right? Correct. Um, so what we did was we had take we took the existing policy. I also looked at the policies of some other towns. Um, we took the best of the best. We um, made sure that the wording was correct and um, added the last uh, paragraph. We wanted to make really clear that this was about right-of-way culverts. Um, so seven of us, including, you know, Eric and Paul, our two last foremans. Um, we had Sandy Levine, Ke uh, Mike Klein, uh, Dexter Lefebvre, um, Mar Marianne uh, Mullen from AOT. All of us uh, looked at this together and came up with the wording and are satisfied with how it came out and, and hope you will like to pass it. I guess my, I had that question on when I read it um, about the other potential culverts that our landowner may own that's not a driveway. I Are think for, yeah, this is, so this is a, a driveway culvert policy, and we might even want to put in, you know, right-of-way driveway culvert policy. It says right here, um, installation of right-of-way driveway culverts. Right, but I'm thinking, like, you know how you, in your list of culverts that mm -hmm. we want to maintain, like, one of them happens to be mm -hmm. a field access, mm -hmm. not a driveway access. Yeah, which is, yeah, I mean, they all they all affect our road, whether it's going in there for a house or a field. Uh, no, I know. I'm just saying, do we want, so I guess I'm just thinking down the road that there might be a situation where it's like, you know, someone's access to a field or whatever. Mm -hmm. Is that our, is that what we also want to maintain? Well, it's. No. Yes. I yes, think we I mean, do. It's still, it's still affecting yes. the roadway the same as a driveway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think and it is And it's done too. to the same standards as because you still have to get an access permit that, and you have still have to follow the same standards when you put them in the first time. I think it should be at the town's discretion. Similar to what we did with Eric. As long as, it's, as, long as it's in the town right away. At the town's discretion in the town's right of way, right. I, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, get, I, can, I can just see it, cut, like, because, <clears throat> well, like, for example, Sarah Seedman's, that, mm -hmm. that's definitely in the town right of way. Mm -hmm. Definitely needs to be clean, but it's yep. not her driveway. Correct. So but it still affects the road the same way. Right. So is she going to come to us and say, "I'm just using her as an example"? <laughs> well, it's in your, it's in the right of way, so you should clean it. Or mm -hmm. is that her responsibility? Well, as of right now, it's hers. But when this happens, right. then it'd be ours. Right. My point being is that this talks about driveways. It doesn't talk about other culverts in right of ways. It's very specific to driveways. Well, you're, you're thinking so, that a driveway is a, access to a house yeah. and not a field. A driveway is a driveway. Mm -hmm. I think that's how they're looking at it. I, I think that's how I, how, it's how I look at it. Anything that requires you know, uh, access. an access permit. Right, exactly. Which access to a field, if they're looking to, to create a whole other access point, then they need to get an access permit. It's a better permit. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just I'm just trying to envision a future where someone's gonna yeah, say I, something and whatever. Yes, Eric, Peter. So I have a question. I think this is all well and good, but how do we enforce this, and what do we do when there's a violation? I mean, we're we're great at creating policies and ordinances and all these different things, but we do a poor job of enforcing them after the fact. So let's say. Eric comes to us and say, we have a potential violation of this driveway, water is washing in the town road, blah, blah, blah. What's the enforcement? Who does it? Who's, how do we do it? Uh, what do we do? Go ahead, Zara. So um, I, I'm going to have two suggestions on that. First of all, instead of having this titled driveway culvert policy, we can have it titled right of way culvert policy. And that covers, right? the confusion on driveway. Um, yeah. If we're re repairing and maintaining, um, you know, hopefully that would stay clear. But Peter, to be honest with you, I did consider that perhaps we need one more paragraph 
um, that says tampering with any culverts without prior approval will be persecuted to the whatever of the law. Yeah, but what? But that's exactly the problem. What is that? I mean, if we, if I mean, there are violations of this policy all over town, right? We've got culverts that were improperly installed. We've got culverts that were improperly maintained. We've got all kinds of problems. So do we do a survey? Do we put people on notice that they have so much time to correct these deficiencies? Wait, hold on. This isn't about people's yeah, culverts not in the right of way. This is about culverts in the right of way that we are taking on. Right. I'm confused at the whole uh, um, keeping people accountable because right. if, if, if a culvert was installed with an access permit, and it's been approved, then we assume we response resume a responsibility, right. yes. So there's no going after anybody for right. no. There's no enforcement other than on it, our own town code. Exactly. <laughs> It'd be on us. Exactly. That's I think that's where I think And very few people confusion. are gonna start going and playing around with their culverts and doing stuff and, and then we'll deal with that. But like that's not this is more about saying that when people say how come you went and fixed that person's culvert, but you didn't fix mine? Because yours isn't in the right of way, and it didn't have damage or whatever. I actually look at it from a different light, so that's one piece of it. But the way this is written, saying that we would we are taking on the responsibility of these culverts, if a culvert doesn't get cleaned out and it damages somebody's property, mm. we could be held liable. I don't feel like we should just say we're taking on the responsibility of these. I think it needs to be written to say at the town's discretion, when we feel like maintenance hasn't occurred, then we will maintain it to, to offset any potential damage to the roadway. I don't like so the idea of taking blanket it, responsibility. It does, it does say that. It says undertaken by the town at the town's discretion and at town expense. That was added by Sandy. And do we feel like that is the, the section right before that says that uh, will be the responsibility of uh, and undertaken at the town? I, that piece of the way I read that leaves a little bit of interpretation that, you know, you're taking all responsibility. And maybe I'm wrong. Um, you know, I, I, if it was, you know, if you we could just say we'll be undertaken by the town rather than responsibility. Maintenance and replacement of the right of way culvert will be undertaken by the town at the town's discretion, as opposed to the yeah. responsibility of. Oh yes, Sandy. Sorry. Um, sorry, I'm Sandy Levine. I helped Zara with writing of this. My understanding is that the, the, the purpose of this was to, was for the town to take over responsibility once it's installed, so we don't have blocked culverts that wash out the road going forward. That the town would do it. If the intention is the town would only occasionally do it, then I think it should be written differently. Yeah, I, I correct. My understanding was that this policy would allow us to. Uh, have conversation with folks to say, why did you fix this one and not this one? And uh, at the discretion of the town's foreman or whoever would be able to say, we feel like the owner hasn't maintained this properly and we feel like there's danger or imminent danger to the roadway. And in that situation, we would, we would assume the responsibility to clean it out at that point in time. But I never took this as we were just gonna do it all of the time. Sorry. Cousin Sandy is correct. Um, this was in reaction to the fact that FEMA is more likely to pay us back for repairs of driveway culverts, which we chose to do the last two years um, when you know when the emergency happens. So it's it's a better policy for FEMA. It's the way that all towns are moving after the last two storms. Um, and it is what we talked about as the select board. I remember Peter talking about his neighbor's culvert is the reason that, you know, the road got blown out. So the point of this is for the town to take on the maintenance of culverts, the upsizing of culverts, the clearing of culverts for right of way driveways and right of way culverts going forward. So it is, it so is a change. 
Okay, so does that mean in this, like, I think this is what Randy's saying. I'll use Susan Clark as an example. <laughs> her driveway was destroyed, her private driveway was destroyed because of a culvert that was in the right of way, but incorrectly installed or something happened. And so that damaged her driveway. Is she going to come to the town to say, because you didn't maintain that driveway, you need to pay for the repair of my driveway. I would. Now, who is this? Would, would that be any different than having a cross culvert by someone's driveway fail and it takes out their driveway? Or I mean, it'd be no different. It's no that. different than that. Yeah. Yes, Sarah. We don't have. You're a lawyer. What are the? I mean, I don't know any situation. Maybe where I'm towns just, are sued or can be successfully sued in court for maintained driveway comforts. My understanding is the towns have sovereign immunity up to the extent that they have, which means that they cannot be sued up to the extent that they have insurance for it. Peter probably knows that better than I do. He's dealt with this. I don't think he probably heard you. Um, Peter, did you hear that? No, I did not. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, this is Sandy. There's My understanding there. is that the town has immunity, sovereign immunity, up to the extent that they have insurance that would cover a damage that's caused by some inaction or negligence on the part of the town. That's correct, but we don't want to we don't want to rely on sovereign immunity. That's definitely the last resort. The insurance company, our insurance company, would throw up that defense. It's likely that they would. Can't we just add a line that says uh, that the town will not? take legal responsibility for damage caused for whatever with color well, no more no more than we use our for for any of the road maintenance we do i mean isn't there just like a no, one I mean, sentence if, standing if we, we re-rate greater road such that it causes somebody's driveway to wash out do we take responsibility for that no we don't we might go right. in and help them fix it but we're not gonna say we're gonna fix your whole driveway right I'm just saying if people are nervous that maybe there's one legal sentence that maybe Sandy could help us with that would talk about the town not taking responsible for the inability to do the work. Dick has a I, well, I, we never do. I mean, if we, fail, if we fail to clean out a culvert, do we take responsibility? If we fail to sand the road because we've got two broken trucks, do we take responsibility? No, we don't. We say we, we did the best we could. We're very, very sorry for your loss, et cetera. And that, whether it's a clipped over mailbox or whatever it is. So I, I, think, okay. I think the less we say about that, the better it is. Okay. I, I kind of agree with that. I don't think this is worth the paper it's written on other than you want to blind you want to you want something you think you can throw in front of FEMA and they're going to pay you back because because it's the scenario that you just put out about somebody's driveway and a guy across the road it's it's not in just the right of way mm -hmm. i think i know which one driveway you're talking about but maybe not i know of one and, and the reason it washed out was the guy's driveway all poured down his drive, and, it, and there was no way in heck that the drive culvert was ever going to take care of it because it was taking care of more water right. than it ever was going to be talking. I don't think we want to put the town in, a, in, a, in, in, in jeopardize the town by putting something in, in, in writing on this. So you are you saying, Vic, that you don't want the town to maintain, or you you don't? It's not that you don't want the town to maintain the culverts. You don't want it in writing. The right. Town I mean, culverts. Exactly. They're going to do. They're going to do as much as they can, but to turn around and say that they're going to take care of every drive culvert in town, I think, is a little bit ambitious. Yes, sir. I think it's absolutely insane to not do anything seeing what we the two events that we've seen the last two years so here again this body can you know not do anything for yet another year and be in the same situation next year or we can 
put together a progressive policy that will help us fix the problem before it begins again. It's not about getting repaid about, by FEMA. I mean, this does help us get repaid by FEMA. It's about doing the right thing for our community. But, and I think Eric agrees with me. I don't think that it is possible to do it to the extent you would think. I think, I think to your point, it would be difficult to hit every single culvert in town. Right. Um, and, it, but that's the same with every cross culvert in town. Right. All we can do is maintain what we can see the best that we can. Right. But the expectation that every single one is touched might be a little bit hard to, hard right. to do. I agree with you on that. We could even do something simple as saying maintenance may include keeping the right of way, right? Then you know, this, this is no different than anything else we take responsibility for, right? We ride the roads the best we can with the equipment we have. We sand and plow the roads the best we can with the equipment we have. And obviously, we can't take a look at every culvert every year. There's no way we can. But we know, Eric knows, and the road crew knows where the problem culverts are. Um, and we can do our best to prioritize the culverts that we clean out, maintain, whatever, whatever we do. We can't, we can't do them all, all the time, but if we can solve a few of the problems, the recurring problems that we've had around town, I think it's well worth doing this. And we know that our previous driveway culvert had some um, language in it that was a little confusing, mm -hmm. and we definitely want to address that for future for future floods. Can I uh, suggest adding something? And I don't know if this may, but under the repair and maintenance, the, the bottom paragraph, uh, following initial installation and repair, blah, 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 and at the town's expense, when the highway department schedule allows, would that at least let Eric off the hook a little bit? You know, if there, it happens to be a crazy spring or something, if they can't do it. The point, I think what you guys are trying to do is clarify that if the town, if the driveway culverts are damaged or need to be cleaned or they need to be repaired, that the town will do it, mm -hmm. not the private landowner. And because that way we get compensated by FEMA. I think that's what you're trying, mm -hmm. all you're trying to do, right? Yep. Okay, I have another concern that just occurred to me. Let's say we have another big storm and 50 people who have right-of-way culverts all lose their driveway. Are we going to reimburse them if they have it repaired? Or are we expecting them to wait for us to repair 50 driveway culverts? Like that is not, we can't That's keep people be housebound for 50 days waiting to repair deal. their driveways. So somewhere we need to either assume that that's going to happen and we either agree to reimburse or we write this policy that people, ex what are you going to say, Zara? I agree that we could add language saying that the town will not uh, reimburse anybody for having any contractors um, to repair driveways. But I also think that we have had 50 driveways blow out the last two years, and yeah, we did take care of them, and people did have to wait until we could do that. But some people wanted money back when they when they repaired their own driveway. Could add language saying, in no way, shape, or form, is the town responsible or uh, responsible financially for any construction or repairs done by anyone other than the town, right? Okay. So is, isn't it true that in a situation like that, many people make what I would call emergency repairs so they can get in and out of their driveway? I mean, everybody in town who has a tractor is out running around trying to help people and make temporary repairs so they can get in and out. That isn't the permanent repair. They may have to wait six months. They might have to wait a year for a permanent repair. But I think to say, you know, we should make it clear that emergency repairs done to create access by an individual resident will not be reimbursed by the town. I agree. You know, ultimately, 
the, the final repair, the installation of a proper culvert, the regrading, the reditching, whatever that is, we'll do that when we have the time and resources to do it. But Randy, in the meantime, if they're frantic to be able to get in and out of their driveway and they hire a contractor to make emergency repairs, that's got to be on them. I think it's too late. It includes far too much. I think that if you isolate this to just the town having discretion to go in and, and maintain culverts that they feel are going to be damaging to the roadways, it's a far more limited pool of, mm -hmm. of activity, something that's much more manageable. It, it, in my mind, uh, limits the expectation, limits the liability. I, I, well, all of this I, has to stay because this is normal. This, this stuff about people need permits and things like that. Sure. That's, that has to stay. Um, but so what I don't know why this has to be more complicated than it is than it needs to be because if we're just looking for the ability to go in and maintain the culverts at, at our own discretion when eric sa sees something that's underperforming and he says i'm making the call that we're going to go maintain this why isn't that good enough yeah. okay zara just so randy knows all of this was in our culvert policy the only thing we're do we're doing is adding this last paragraph so i haven't added a bunch of things or the the road committee hasn't added a bunch of things we just uh changed a few words on the paragraphs leading up to this this was our original policy you've added the expectation that you're going to maintain every culvert in town I mean, I, I was told that the road crew was for maintenance, and yes, I thought that the select board was leaning that way, that um, since we are doing it anyway, that we would write it into our policy and make it sane. So this is a starting point, and I agree with Peter that we need to add some language about not, get, not repaying people for any emergency repairs or contractors that they hire, but I think it's a good policy for the town to be taking care of its community and making sure that people can get in and out of their driveways when we have these hundred years events every year. Um, also, yeah. you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome. Thank you, Zara. And now I have a, a question from Cheryl. So why can't the policy say, take care of the culvert, do your own maintenance, and if you don't, Eric's, you're gonna get a letter. <laughs> giving you a certain time frame to get this done and if not we have to do it you're going to get charged because that's a totally different so I'm, just, I'm just curious yeah that's a different because the, the the point behind doing this is to ensure that our roads are um, not going to fall apart right and so if we have control over those driveway culverts which are you know the culverts that are hitting all those major ditches that we have right we don't want to have a driveway culvert that you know if we're not maintaining them in a way that makes the road as safe as po not safe but as sturdy as possible resilient that's yeah as, as resilient this is why we would we would want to take over I'm just curious because it seems like Brady, you, you want to make sure that the liability don't push to us in but, some way and the expectation right it's the expectation yeah it's it's both um you know i think sandy explained you know some uh some things that you know, it probably hold us um, harmless and whatnot. So maybe that's less of a concern. But the the expectation of the folks in town is absolutely a concern of mine. I would say something like, um, and then I'll call on you. I would say something like, um, under repair, maintenance, and replacement of right of way culverts. I wouldn't even say following initial installation or you know. I would just say at the town's discretion, they may um, maintain or, or, or you know repair or maintain a culvert that is in the right of way, right? Just not all, but like they may, right? And. That way, we don't necessarily say whose ownership it is that the that the person has to maintain their own culvert. I mean, we could say, you know, you have to maintain your culvert, and we may, at our discretion, maintain it as well. Yes, Michelle Johnson. Michelle, so, Eric, 
what, what do you foresee as wanting to do? Is it that you, I mean, you have these drivers, you have these culverts, and just like you said, the town may deem necessary to take care of culvert because it's in a right of way that affects the rest of the road. Is that what your goal is? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're. I mean, like, what's your goal? I've, uh, I've worked in a, a town previous to this, and their policy was they maintained right-of-way culverts. And we may have done maybe one or two a year. I mean, you just, you just didn't do a lot of them. But so, I think I mean, what we're responding to and what Andy's responding to are these future floods that are going to happen. Right. And everyone's going to come and say, but you're, 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 you said in your policy that you're going to take care of it and pay for it and do it all. Yes, Zara. You need to keep the following the initial installation because we want people who are putting in a new driveway to pay for that yeah. initially. Um, okay. But I would also say that I believe the town people believe that we are responsible for their driveway culverts now. I, I really doubt that if you if you polled every person in this community that they have any conception that they are responsible for their own right of way driveway culverts now. I don't I don't believe the town knows that. This is one of those cases, Randy, where where you know something because you're on the select board that the the other two thousand of us don't. I always thought my, my culvert is my responsibility. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? That people think that it's the town's or they think it's theirs? I think that, that I think that they they think I don't think that they know that they're responsible for maintenance. And I also think that honestly, it's so much easier to just take care of them to than to be sending out letters and telling people what to do and to do it and you know, then figuring out like, do they have physical issues? Are they too old to do it? Do they not have the money to do it? I mean, it's just like, what's that gonna look like and who's gonna be in charge of that? Not me. <laughs> yeah. Sarah. Uh, what if we add a line at the bottom of the, re the, the troublesome repair maintenance uh, that says the town will not reimburse private landowners for repairing, replacing culverts on their property without consent and approval or prior consent and approval of the road form and road commissioner. So at least that kind of gives it a, it doesn't, it's not like a hard and fast, but unless Eric goes over and says, yeah, you can replace that and we'll pay for it, then, then they're screwed. Because I would also guess in, in a major storm, you, and say there were 50 people, you might subcontract anyway, right? You wouldn't just do There's no way road crew. There's no way you could. No, and we're so, on roads too. Um, but also, can I just say something? You know, yeah. you do realize that FEMA did. Can you come over here? Because sure. no one can so, hear you. I mean, I think a point is that FEMA paid up to $4,500 for people who replaced their own driveway culverts during this last storm, 2024, not 2023. It was a change in policy. So there is a chance that if someone goes in and says, I can't wait, I need to have my driveway repaired. We all know who we're talking about. You repair, they, you repair, you submit your bill to FEMA. Whereas what I think Zara and the subcommittee is trying to do is that when whatever culverts are replaced by the town at the end of the driveway, we can turn to FEMA and give them this policy and say, see, we have a policy to replace these driveway culverts. That's all FEMA wants to see. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the town's going to be ending up replacing driveway culverts that could have damaged the roads, and we're not going to get reimbursed by FEMA. That's the point of the okay. storm. So, and we did a lot of that yeah. in this last storm. Oh, the prior storm, oh. even more. Yeah. Okay. But how do we, yeah, go ahead, Peter. I'm sorry, Liz, for interrupting you. Well, I just have a real concern. I mean, over the years, regardless of policies, regardless of whatever, a few people in town have maintained their culverts I would say the high percentage of people, maybe 90%, don't do anything to their culverts. Once they fail, then they deal with something. But I mean, I haven't seen anybody trying to clean out a culvert or shovel shovel material in front of a culvert that was blocking it. I mean, people don't maintain their culverts. Okay, so we're not- of our ability, we're gonna take on the responsibility for this maintenance. I okay. understand we can't do them all, all the time, but I think it's the right thing to do. I'm sorry. I'm going to take one more comment from Paul, and then we're going to finish this conversation until our next meeting. So, Paul. So there was a time, guys, when 
we used to um, put in culverts for folks and they would pay um, for the culvert. They would purchase them through the town. It turned out to be a no-no on our part, even though it was a good deed because they would avoid having to pay tax. They would get it at our uh, culvert pricing, which is basically the state of Vermont building um, price. And that, that seemed to work really well by incentivizing folks to say, well, I, I can't get this culvert changed any cheaper than the town doing it, number one, and also getting the culvert at the town's cost. Unfortunately, because that did not work with bookkeeping and, uh, you know, record keeping and all of that stuff, that went away. Um, but I will say that that was that stopped during my era, but it but it was happening through the Gary Lamell era. Era um, and Peter probably remembers. I, I'll say that folks tended to be a lot more amenable to upgrading their failing culvert um, during, you know, when when that system was in place. I know at this point that's not feasible, but maybe there's a middle ground somewhere. I, I want to say with Eric w would probably agree. If there's a culvert that's causing issues, likely somebody is going to fix it from the road crew anyway. To to you know, to prevent a potential hazard happening down the road if they've got time, if they've got availability. Okay. Thank you, Paul. All right, so we're going to put this on hold for our next meeting and I guess make a few little adjustments to the language in the last paragraph that makes it a little broad, more broad, perhaps. Um, or less broad. <laughs> um, and move on to the next item. Thank you for your work on it, Sarah, and Sandy, and Eric. Absolutely. Um, okay, so the next thing is the Highway Department budget um, presentation. So Eric, you sent us the budget, and then there was also, um, looks like capital budget items related to some of the road stuff. Okay. Who wants to talk? Start with this, Mark. Are you or uh, Eric? Are you? Eric's gone. You already. Yeah. 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 So we have here what we spent in the 2023-24 budget. Mm -hmm. We have the current budget that we're in right now yep. and what we've spent to date. And then we have next year's budget. Proposed budget, correct. Proposed budget in column M, right? Yes. Okay. Do you have any questions on it? Uh, looks like we've increased our road gravel. Trying to. Yeah. I did, we had um, a standing $10,000 on the construction end for the gravel, and I took that out and I put it up to our uh, just summer maintenance road gravel. So that change really isn't 40, it's 30 is what you're trying to say? Yeah. Uh, okay. Because we don't, I don't take it from there because we don't really do construction. It's all maintenance. And my thought process was um, with the stone that we buy for mud season, we, we had it at 37.5, but I put it to 20 because we didn't spend that much last year. And between the 20 and the 80, that gives us 100,000 for gravel if needed. Because whatever I don't spend on the stone, I can put it towards gravel. Just gives us more ability, I think. How does it work? Do you mix the salt with the sand? No. 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 So you ha how does it? You just say you salt the road separately. The, the pavement salt. gets salt. Salt the Yeah. I thought the um, sand had salt in it too. Nope. It doesn't. Oh. No. How, how does it not freeze? Uh, it. It it's doesn't so really. You, so we run it through our grizzly, which is a basically a big metal screen and gets the chunks out and then we put it in the truck plus you have new sand right this year we do yes it's hopefully it won't be as chunky 
And trucking is, what does that mean, towing or something? No. Well, well, it depends on where you're at. So trucking and winter maintenance is for the sand. Okay. Um, and then we actually have uh, towing, which is right down here in equipment maintenance. That's that's for. Okay, yeah. So trucking is like the cost of going back and forth. What is that? Yes, for hiring trucks to haul the. Oh, product. we hire somebody out. I see. Yeah, when you're. When it was you're, us going back and forth. No, it's it's. Uh, I was like, what does that mean? We, we haul a lot of a lot of material for that, and we, we can't do it with just our two. Gotcha. Trucks. All right. Yes, Mark. So I have a, just a clarifying question for Eric at the high level. So I'm looking at line 83. So the current year budget is 879000 and change. And are you saying that next year's budget so, is going to be 100000 less? No. I, there are some numbers I could not put in because I did not have. Okay. So they're not in there yet. Like uh, the unemployment, the retirement, okay. the life insurance, all that stuff. Thank you. Oh, yeah. This does, this does, not, this does not include any of the uh, capital budget items, correct? Correct. Per correct. So they're all in addition to this, or the ones that pertain to the roads are. Right. This is just my operating costs for my myself. Mud season mitigation you've reduced? I did some, yes. Is that, I'm guessing that's part of that's because of the work that's been done on all of the roadways? Or? Uh, no, I don't think we've, we've like, we only spent... Uh, I don't remember what we spent last year. I can't remember if it was a bad mud season or not last year. It was bad, but we didn't spend a terrible amount on stone. Um, just because it was the previous year. Yeah. All right. Mark. Feel free to ask. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. So I just wanted to respond to Peter's question about capital budget. So the budget in front of us doesn't include debt service. Correct. For the highway. And it doesn't include any new capital items, which there are very few for the next fiscal year. I think I sent the select board yesterday the, the proposed capital budget for 25-26. Yeah. What do we have on that? I don't think it's on that. Uh, shed doors. Yeah. You know, uh, do we have a truck? Because we need to replace one of our trucks. The truck is not on here. It goes into the asset equipment yeah. fund, okay. the 50, but there's nothing dedicated to a specific truck. Okay. Did you all hear that, Eric? Said yeah, you said there is a new truck replacement? Well, we're, yeah, we're, I think, behind on that already. It's supposed to be, it was supposed to be this year, and we never did it. I think. Uh, I oh, uh, not the Komatsu loader. No, the dump truck. Mark, do you know when the last, when the next truck replacement was scheduled? Uh, the next truck it might have been 26, but I thought it was 26. Replacement, hang on. I haven't looked at that CFP in quite some time. 2027. The dump truck? No. The International should be up already. The International should be up next year. Yeah. Yes, Peter. Sorry about that. Eric, a quick question. So on highway wages, you say, uh, based on cost of living of 8.7%, where did you get that 8.7%? What index did you use? 54 percent You can't hear. You need to talk about it. It's supposed to be 4%. I'm sorry? It's supposed to be 4%, not 8%, 4%. It's 4 4.9. Your, yeah, your note that. says your note says in red based on cost of living increase of eight point seven percent, but you're saying the wage increase is only four percent. Yeah, that's a carryover from two thousand twenty three, Peter. Yeah. On the okay, all right. Okay. All right. I just wanted to that scared me. Can yeah, we go no. back to the international truck and why you guys why the budget committee and the capital plan has it for twenty twenty seven and you guys think it's twenty twenty five or twenty six? 
Well, it's a 20, it's a 17. 17. It's a 17. And we keep them, what, seven, eight years? But it's in a, where we're getting that number from is uh, from, from, from uh, the town report. Right. Right. That's what was in the town report. What so is it in your capital budget? I don't have it open. I think Mark's got it. Uh, do you have the CIP over there? Uh, I don't think so. I can see. Uh, but it's it's sitting in the 2027 column. If, if that's the case, what's that push the Freightliner out to? Oh, way too far. Have you, do you have that, Mark? So that's another, is that another dump truck? Yeah. yeah. So there's another dump truck in 2030, another one in 2032. That's many years away. No, that doesn't sound right. Be I'm seeing 2026 on the capital improvement plan. For the international, right? For, for the Komatsu loader. That's already that's on the plan. Yeah, that's that's, a that's not a truck. Not a truck. Well, I think we need to figure this out because I think. So if you go down out. the 2026 column, there's virtually nothing in highway. I can't pull it up. For some reason, I don't. Must have switched to password or something. Oh, Randy, you need a password for software I, manager. I have a whole spreadsheet of passwords. No, not that. You need a manager. Um, okay, so I think we need some clarity on mm -hmm. that. Right. To find out for both the international as well as for the next one. It's 20, one. Yeah, so Aaron, 20 25, 25 is expectation is it's in 25, 26. Yeah, yeah cuz 25 puts it at 8 years old. And we know it's a 2017 for mm -hmm. sure. And if my memory serves me right, the warranty was for 7 years on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we pulled financing based on that 7 years. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the life expectancy of those trucks was beyond the warranty, I think, in the CIP. That may be part of it. I don't think that the CIP was set up to, to transition at when warranty was done. The life expectancy of that equipment was Actually, warranty. in most cases, it was. So that's, that's, why, I'm, that's why I'm confused so that would, on these. That would meet the time frame that you guys have if it was set up that way, because that seven-year duration would put it in the 24, 25 area. So we carry uh, the depreciation for seven years. What's that? We carry depreciation for seven years on yeah. the trucks. Which lines up with the warranty, the fine, like everything else. Mm -hmm. So. That would make sense. So that would just in, that would change this page to be something. Yeah, I think we'd have to review the asset inventory for the trucks. Yes, we might yep. want to do that. I think if we don't, we're going to get caught. It Yes, Vic. Eric can correct me, and I don't want to throw a monkey wrench into it. I'm not trying to cause any problems here, really. Uh -huh. But we still, I think we're in agreement that the, the real issue is that Freightliner. If it makes it, I mean, what, what do we do? That's the question. What do we do? do? Do we replace two trucks in one year, or, or what? Because you think the Freightliner might not last two it's, years? It's a constant battle of working on You'd have to take a look at it. Maybe we need a different brand. Okay. I don't necessarily think it's the brand. I yeah. think I think it has to do with its history. Yeah, how it was run. Okay, um, and that problem has gone away. Um, yeah, I would I would agree with Victor and Eric. You probably need to look at the whole the whole lot and get with Mark and and so, review the CIP. So I'm looking at debt servicing. So we bought the international in 2018. We bought a freight liner in 2019. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So the first payment on those would have been 2019 and 2020. 2020 yeah. Correct. And so. So then you go seven years from then. 
But you said the freight line was scheduled in 30. That'd be 10 years. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. Or nine Let years. me look. Because if it's one year from now. From well, I couldn't tell you which was which. Could yeah, one was, was yep, one was 2030. Yep. Yeah. So it almost seems like, and if you back the other date and you said the other one was 27, it's 10 days from uh, acquisition. Or 10 years, sorry, 10, 10 years. years from acquisition. So there really should be like 2028, 20, 2030. 20, yeah. But you're asking now for 2026 and 2025. Well, it's something we need to look at. <laughs> yeah, you, you better look at it. And I mean, I guess also, one, the warranties, and then what we would expect costs to be if we held on to them for another year. Well, the warranty is roughly bumper to bumper seven years is about just under $20,000, $18,000, and that's one repair. Easy. Ain't yeah. cheap. That ain't cheap. What's in our repair budget? No, <laughs> 43. Well, that's what I put in there, but yeah. Yeah, it's, okay. And I think, so I, I had a question about that. It shows that we only spent 11. No, no, that's, I don't think I had all that. Okay, yeah. I was, I was, I was know, looking at more that than number. That was, it, it's been updated since. Because we had, uh, actually, the uh, the freight liner had quite a bit of work done this year on it. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, so... Oh, just one other point. I think what is also causing con some confusion is our, our year running mid-year. Mm -hmm. So when we say 26, do we mean... The first half of 26 or the second, or the second half, half of yeah. 26? Because Generally, we mean like probably fiscal year that's 27. That's fiscal year. That's how that's set up is, is this reading. Because yeah, remember we put in on the no, CIP, no, I know. We, we made a note specifically because that kept rearing its ugly right. head. So if you took like um, the international dump truck and you said the first payment was in 2019 and you add seven years, that's 2026. So the question is whether it's in fiscal year 2026 or fiscal year 2027. But when we started our, our loan in 2019, yes. we, bought it, we probably bought it after July 1st. Right. So yes. that was fiscal year 20. Yep. That's so what we always 27. do. So right. That would be 27, yep. yeah. That's correct. All right, so it sounds like you guys need to get together with the budget so, committee. So when I say 27, do we mean 26, 27, or 27, 28? Because remember, we're on a mid-year. Yeah, so we would 27. mean 26. Oh, it, it was the year ending. Is the fiscal year. Cheryl, the fiscal year. What fiscal year are we in right, right currently? Now. We're in 2025 fiscal year, because that would end in... June of yeah. 2025. Yeah, so it's the year ending for the fiscal year. Right. So this, so this, this does be, not make sense, actually. So this fiscal year should be one number. It is. It's not. It's 25 slash 26. That's so calendar years. We need to have a fiscal year. Is This is, you we are. On the budget for yes, yep. for fiscal year 26. So that's all I'm saying is that. This is a calendar year that crosses over between 25 and 26, but this is called fiscal year 26. Got it. Right. Thank you. Yeah. In fact, we might, it might be clearer for everyone if, if our budgets actually said fiscal year. You can say 25, 26, but just below it say fiscal year 26. There, gotcha. the heading. Yeah, yep. so that you know. Okay. Um, all righty. So you guys will mm -hmm. figure that out. All right. Thank you for your work on this. Um, were there other budget requests that came in? There's the capital spending plan that you presented to us, which is... Right. That we don't have to look at till okay. we update the capital asset in return okay. for the trucks, and that can change. So. But this, but this, um, Komatsu, oh, this will just show up in the capital budget piece. It's not, we put all our trucks in the capital budget. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, all righty. Uh, let's see. Uh, six o'clock. It's now six o Wait, no, we'll be at the treasurer's, uh, treasurer's report. So you all sweet and quick. Okay. We Thank did, you. We, um, 
got approved for the line of credit for 3.5 million. Yep, dollars. thank you. And that paperwork went in today, so we should be able to have that down tomorrow. We're just going to cover those bills right here. Aw. Um, because it's a. Uh, Cheryl? Yes? Excuse me. Cheryl, could you get closer to the microphone, please? Yes. <laughs> and, and speak up, Cheryl. Please. Um, so that's $1.6 million in bills right there, and I think 1.2 is for dirt tech. Okay. Right now, we still have some outstanding bills for dirt tech that Eric and I need to go through and sign off and approve. Um, so, and there's and the, the 3.5 million line of credit is available to us tomorrow, according to Cheryl. Yes. From the bank. You missed that, Peter. Okay. <laughs> So, and then we've also applied for Vermont bond bank loan. Okay. And however, with them, what they're probably going to have to do is pay down the line of credit. They're not just going gotcha. to give us that money. Okay. So that this is the second round of the Vermont bond bank. Yes. Great. Okay. Cool. And that was what amount? We don't know yet. It goes based on what we had for expenses. And so now we have bill five and six now. Mm -hmm. Have we in. paid them back anything for the first one yet? Um, paid them fifty thousand, but the way we okay. the way we we chose our election, we originally it was like for every hundred thousand we had to pay them back fifty thousand. Right. But we changed that election when we filed our last report to say when we get fifty percent of all our money, we'll pay them back some money. Yeah. But for right now, that's kind of like at a standstill. But the line Great. of credit, I think, ended up being like four point eight nine percent. So it, was, it was the bond than, bank. Couple. The bond bank. If we get the new one, will be 0.5 like percent. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Okay. So that's a whole different thing. All right. But, cool. Um, so I mean, I th we're all right. We're holding steady. We have about yep. 700 thousand in the, the checking account now, but also we'll have that next school payment coming up. So I've got to hold on to money for that. Okay. So that'll be that 1.2 million dollars. When are taxes due next? November 20th. <laughs> okay, so soon. But also we have to consider the fact that a lot of people came in because of the floods and said, "Hey, I'm paying my taxes in full right now." So we got to keep that in mind as we oh, roll along. Oh, that we along. may not be getting. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. You've already gotten a lot. We've of, gotten quite a, a bit lot of money. Of taxes. And the next school payments due when? It'll be. It's due 30 days after the 20th. So. They tried to say 20 days, and I found an old letter that said 30 days, so I pushed back, and they were okay. But then also I asked them, what would you do if we couldn't, have, couldn't pay? And they don't have an answer for that. They had to reach out to an attorney. Tell the kids they have to stay home from school. All right. Sorry, middle six. So that's, my, that's me. All right. All Thank done. you. Any questions for our treasurer? Mm -hmm. Alrighty, thank you, Cheryl. Okay, thank you. Um, okay so next is uh, oh, I do have a quick question. Have we gotten anything else from FEMA? That was my question. No, <laughs> okay. no, we have not. <laughs> All right, but we did get like our pilot money, and that was like you know a chunk of money for uh, payments in lieu of taxes. taxes. Yeah. Okay. So we did get some of that, and that's helped bridge. You mean things. for the p we get pilot money for people who didn't pay their tax? No, or pilot, for just our regular. Business? That's for the um, town, yeah. town, state buildings. Yes, yeah, state buildings. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. Maybe they also didn't they aren't they giving us something for the people who are abating their taxes? What was that? Or yeah, that was like two thousand for what they did that. I have to oh, see okay. if they uh, they're still honoring that program or not based on okay. like Linda Fenton and those people yeah, like that. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So are we are we still at like what is it, five eighty three or something like that for mm -hmm. FEMA? That's what we've received from them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You know, I don't understand at this point. I mean, I would think the state would be able to just bless it and say, okay, you guys have been scrutinized enough, <laughs> but I guess we'll have to hold out. <laughs> well, I, I think I would agree with uh, Zara, and I'll call on you just a second, that, you know, we'll give this new person a couple of weeks, and, you know, if we don't hear anything by the end of the year, we start complaining to our congressional people. Yeah, did you have a comment, Zara? That's what you're going to say. Okay. Just reiterating that. And um, yeah, my head exploded a little bit when I found out that the first two group of roads that I have already told you added up to over a million. They were asking me that again. And I was like, um, that's already gone through, guys. So where's yeah. our money? OK. Did you have a comment? No. Okay. That's, All right. That's been the nature yeah. of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. like yeah. All these roads that we've been working on for over a year. I know. It seems like a game plan on their part, to be honest with They're you. They're keeping the comments, comments coming from frustration that we haven't seen anything from them. Um, but every time you turn around, it's something, and it seems like it's just a delay, a mm -hmm. stall tactic. Uh, it's very frustrating. 
Well, I will say that I think our roads look fabulous. Driving around central Vermont, like the East Montpelier, Callis roads, it, you know, they just, they're not repaired like ours are. I think ours are hopefully going to hold hold up for the next one. And there are some places that they just haven't even come to for East Montpelier, right? I mean, I don't know who they're working with, but... Um, all righty, so discussion of impact of, thank you everybody, um, discussion of impact of the town hall renovation bonds defeat and moving forward, action unlikely. Um, is Sandy still here? Yes, she is. Um, so, I mean, we don't really have anything to update yet um, about um, MERP, so I will say I'm very discouraged having not heard from its buildings and um, Can I BGS. Yeah, BGS. And I have, I'm sorry. Here's a question. Oh, are we doing executive session? Uh, yeah, is that what I'm sorry? No, not yet. No, 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 no. Um, no, 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 no problem. Um, so um, I emailed them a week after the results of when we were supposed to find out if we got the grant, um, and no one responded. Um, they haven't been communicating with Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. I emailed them again yesterday um, or Sunday. I have not heard a peep, like not even an acknowledgment of my email. Um, they haven't changed their website. I understand that they are potentially, um, I, I understand that their director left um, and has been replaced by someone, so that could be a reason, but it's really poor communication on their part. Um, I actually did, <laughs> was in touch with a seven days reporter on something different, and I said, somebody needs to investigate this because there's about 125 towns who have applied and no one has heard. So, um, at this point, Sandy, Dave, and I plan on meeting together um, to sort of figure out next steps because the problems haven't gone away from the, the town hall. And um, I think, um, and this is just my opinion, and Sandy, you're welcome to chime in. Um, I, what I would like to do is, one, first find out if there's anything from MERP, right? Because that if we got a lot of money from MERP, it would make sense to use that money to make you know some of the improvements that we need to do for the town hall. If MERP doesn't really give us anything, or a very small amount, or maybe only something for the fire station, um, you know, that's when, you know, we, regardless, I think we need to sit down at the table again and say, what are all of our options? Um, repairing the town hall piecemeal, you know, maybe going through section by section that needs to get done, that we know needs to get done. Inviting people who um, have, you know, reached out to me and other people saying we could do this a different way. I would love to find out, you know, their ideas. There may be construction people here who want to volunteer their time to help out um, with doing some of the things that need to get done. Um, maybe the town hall isn't, you know, the place to hold our town offices. Uh, maybe it's looking at a shed, you know, a garage and, you know, doing something bigger than a two and a half million dollar bond and maybe combining the garage and town offices. I think that it all really is back on the table. Um, and um, I think regardless of what we do, we need to get the radon dealt with. <laughs> That's first and foremost. I can't believe we haven't done it yet, but we need to figure out how to do that and maybe spend our ARPA money on that because we still have some of that money unallocated. Um, so at the very least, um, do that and um, and then take it from there. So that's my comment about that. And um, I just wanted to see if Sandy has anything that she wants to add, add before you say anything, Peter. Uh, no, I, I don't. I think it would be good for the town hall committee to get together and look at a wide range of options going forward, and including expanding the town hall committee to get some other yep. folks in who have some other expertise and can help us move it, move it forward. Yeah, thank you, Sandy. Yes, Peter. I just think I, I agree with everything you're saying. I think this is a, this is a time to take a giant step back 
reconsider, first of all, a lot of the assumptions that we made back in the beginning of this process that led us to where we got to. Um, I was just reflecting earlier today, thinking about uh, other small town town halls in our area, and a lot of them are way smaller than our town hall, way smaller. And, you know, I think by saying it may be cheaper to renovate than build new, but we sort of talked ourselves into growing into exactly the same space that we're already in. So, you know, I just think going right back and, you know, maybe we can go quickly through it, but go back to the assumptions we originally made and look at all the options again before we go ahead. And I think the other thing is we do have some urgent emergency repairs we need to do to the existing town hall regardless. Like the heating system is basically dysfunctional at this point in time. We can't go through winter without it, without a heating system or with only electric heaters downstairs and Renai heaters upstairs. So I think we have a few things that we need to move forward on fairly quickly. Yeah. Okay. So any comments, questions? I think Peter hit on some of the stuff that I came to my mind is we need to address some of the issues that we've been kicking down the road. Right. So I agree 100% with, with Peter, and we need to revisit that list and start moving forward with the expectation that Town Hall sits as it is for a while. Victor? I think Shelley was ahead oh, Shelley, of Shelley, just a couple things, I, and this is probably already brought up before. Did we ever look like at the state police barracks? Do we? We own um, we, we did talk about that actually. Um, they won't let it go. What was that, Sarah? I can't remember what, how how that. I wrote two yes. years ago to the to the governor's office and about using the, the, the state police barracks and got a response that after careful consideration that they wanted to uh, bring in some consultants to figure out what was the best use of the state police barracks and was unlikely to be the town hall. That's reluctant. I've been leaning on people like Lindsey Curley and stuff like that as well. But that's very, so it's, it's empty. Yep. And, you know, yeah, and also the school, right? I mean, if we really are having declining enrollment, maybe we lease a wing of the Rumney School, right? I mean, there's... I think there's a lot of options, Zara. Yeah, just to put in my two cents, um, you know, we could increase our tax base by having somebody buy the town hall and, and give it the love that it needs and create another business that has taxes for our town. I, just before we get into that term lease, that school was built and paid for by Middlesex taxpayers. We are not going to lease our building. We don't own it now. We don't own it the anymore. They, they can give Sarah, it back to us. Sarah, once again, I can't hear you. Yeah, you can't really can't hear you, Sarah. I said this, the school was built and paid for and renovated by Middlesex taxpayers, and it may have gone to the Washington Central School District, but they okay. should give that back to us if, that, if they're not going to use yeah. it. Yeah. I would be pissed as a taxpayer if we had to lease our own building. Yeah, right. so whatever. We're not making any decisions today or tomorrow. Oh. Um, and so, but I do think that um, what, and I'm reluctant, honestly, to sort of start anything until I at the very least hear from Merp. I cannot believe that we will not hear before 1129, which is the date that we're required to sign, anyone's required to sign a grant agreement. So, you know, unless Merp is literally gone and the money doesn't exist anymore and they ha they can't figure out how to communicate that with us you know i just want to wait till i hear that before we reconvene a town meeting you know committee and invite people to join us and um and you know move forward with the things that have to get done um that are imminent so any other comments about the failed bond vote? Yes, Peter. Can we agree to go ahead and get an estimate to replace slash repair the heating system at this point in time? I mean, it's November for Christ's sake. I um, think we need to. Yeah, we can. Yeah. I think I that's just a good think idea. I, yeah. 
Okay. Would you ask for more? Normally we go to Bourne's, but can you ask for a couple of bids or more than one? Oh, I think so, yeah. So I would, I would advise us to go with um, the suggestions that came in our energy report. Um, because I, you know, it is a part of our town plan to also, as you replace things, to be more energy efficient, isn't it, Sandy? I think it is in our town plan to do that. Um, so I think that. Go ahead. Go ahead, Liz. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, so we can look to see what's in our town plan and ask them to quote us for that. I think it's like a forty thousand dollar work uh, thing. I forget. Yes. Peter. So, Peter. you know, anything we do to put a proper heating system in that in the, the existing building is only going to bring good value to that building. You know, whether it makes sense to consider replacing the lift. I mean, if we can repair it in any way, we should. But does it make sense to go ahead and replace the lift? I don't know. That's something we need to think about more carefully because I'm not sure that brings value to the building. I mean, it brings some value to the building, but... I just don't know. Yeah, one of the things that concerns me a little bit about MERP as well is if we get any money, part of it has to go towards ADA. And we know that most of our ADA costs in that bond were associated with the groundwork to allow people to get into the building. Mm -hmm. um, because right now it's sort of impossible to get a wheelchair into the building, right? So it wasn't about the cost of a lift. It was about setting up the building in order to have someone enter the building. So. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm not sure, like, I mean, if we get the MERP money or any MERP money, you know, I'm not sure what we would have to do that would be, include ADA accessibility and what we could afford to do. We, I mean, we might have to turn the grant down, right, if it's, if it's um, not enough or just doesn't meet the needs of what, you know, we had planned on. So, um, okay. So anyway, that's that, and I hope to hear um, either after seven days prints an article about it, which they probably won't because it's not very interesting. Um, but um, I did way. say I can pass this on to Digger, and they said, no, we'll take this. And I was like, well, I'll see if you really do take it. All right. Um, uh, orders. We have the orders. We should look at those if we haven't already. Any other matters that come before the board? I had a question on the orders. Yeah. Um, just for clarity, what we have a bill in there for fifteen thousand dollars to EF Wall. I thought that's a part of our six that seventy thousand that we approved. Fifteen of it was. Um, I thought it was ten. No, it was fifteen. No, it was fifteen. Yeah. Okay. So that's what that is. How long does that? If we're on hold, how long does that um, VIA and... Well, we're done with them. I mean, I, I, whatever their last bills are going to be, we'll be done, so... Yeah, there should be no further action. There should action. be no further action, right. Okay. Um, so what we have from them is a design plan, and we have costs associated with it, which I used, actually, in the MERP. I used all those numbers. It was very helpful, but, again doesn't matter now <laughs> so um, okay um, so now um, excuse me um, hello what, what's it called again orca, or, orca. Um, <laughs> young man <laughs> we're gonna go in no you have to discuss and make oh yeah motion. okay sorry but just take your headphones off um, so we um, there's some correspondence around the Mead Road issues um, so this may require entering executive session to discuss legal matters as provided by one VSA statute 313A1F um, and Sarah you determined that this was a because it re involves our lawyer. Well, this has to do with. Can you come over here? I believe under correspondence, you received correspondence from our town attorney, right? Yes. yes. Concerning an issue on Mead Road, correct? Yes. And the town attorney was looking for a response, and you said you did not feel comfortable giving a response until you met with the board and discussed it with the board. Yes. Right. Therefore, since it's. From a, town, from a lawyer to a town attorney to us asking, or you guys, asking how to do this, then my suggestion, I think that falls squarely under lawyer, client, confidentiality. I agree. 
you should discuss this in executive session, and, uh, and that's that. Okay. I would make that motion. Okay, Randy second. moves and Vic seconds. So if anyone is not on the select board. I would, I would love to go. You may leave and we will act. <laughs> um, will there be any like. No, we'll uh, then adjourn, uh, adjourn the meeting. Yeah, we'll come out of executive. We'll adjourn the meeting so you don't need to record anymore. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, you can, you know, why don't you go ahead and pack up your stuff but, you if you can. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, it's, uh, so all in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Okay, so we're gonna let Orca pick up right now, so we'll. Um, so who made, Randy made it in second. It was Vic. Yeah.